Okay, we have a really fun integral here today. This was sent to me by Vengeance, YB8LM. We've got the integral from zero to infinity, e to the minus, x plus one over x, all squared dx. Okay, now it should be pretty easy to see the similarity here to the Gaussian integral. If you just had something else here, if we just had one variable here, it would be exactly in the form of the Gaussian integral. The solution for that would be square root of pi over two. So my first thought was actually, let's do a u substitution on this to clean it up and then we're like basically right at the solution. The trouble is when you take the derivative of that, you get like one minus one over x squared. You might be able to get it to work, but I kind of gave up on that really quick just because it looked messy and I didn't feel like doing it. So let me know if you did it that way, but I kind of felt like I wanted to do it a different way because what I noticed was if I do a u substitution for just one over x, it's gonna work really nice with this here. Because if u is 1 over x, take the reciprocal on both sides, and x is 1 over u, then I could take a derivative, and this is going to be just minus 1 over u squared du. So we'll go ahead and substitute. First, if you plug in infinity, this is now going to 0. And you plug in 0, think of it like 0 plus, just so that you're not confused with possibly having a minus value here. Plug that in here, this is going to be going to positive infinity. Now for this x plus one over x value, x, let's just see what that is to be clear. So x plus one over x, x is gonna be one over u, and one over x is gonna be u. But what happens, I can rearrange this and write it like this. So nothing changed except for the variable name. And so when I write this, we can just write it as e minus u plus one over u. And then our dx is this. I'll bring the u squared into the denominator but let's use this minus sign just to flip the bounds around so we can get it back to like this where we're going from zero to infinity. But now what I wanna do is let's put some labels on things. So I'm gonna call this integral i and it's the same as our original integral i. And what I wanna do is add these two integrals together, but technically to do it, I should have the same variable name in each just so that we're not confused, not that it really matters, but let's, with a definite integral, let's change everything back Let's change all these to x's so that we've got the same as our original. And then adding these together, now we're going to have two copies of the integral, or 2i. Both have the same bounds, 0 to infinity. This one is going to look this way. And we want to add it to this stuff here. And then in order to clean this up, let's get a common denominator so I can multiply in here by 1, multiplying by x squared over x squared. Let's get rid of this two. I can divide off two on both sides just so we isolated our goal of i. And I don't think we need any of this stuff on a definite integral, so let's get this out of here. Now with the common denominator, I can bring these all together so we have half out front going from zero to infinity. Everything is over this x squared. But then what I can do is factor this term out. We've got this in common in both places. So what I'll do is factor that in front. And then what we've got left is x squared plus 1. Now over here for x squared plus 1 over x squared, I can clean that up just by dividing in the x squared. Not that it's going to really be better, it's just going to be nicer for what we want to do. So if I divide that into the numerator, we're going to have 1 plus 1 over x squared. So let me just rewrite this end part this way. And now here, this is still kind of tricky because what I wanted to do the first time I did this was I kind of wanted to go back to that same u substitution again that I mentioned at the beginning, but we already found that's not gonna work because like I said, when we take the derivative, we get one minus one over x squared. So this value is clearly not this, so that's not really gonna work. But what we can do is, sometimes it's helpful to kind of do the u substitution a different way. Like usually we have the u substitution driven off of what we want the u to be. In this case, we want the u substitution to be driven off of the du, or at least I find that it helps to think of it that way. So what we want is we want to force our du to be exactly this here. Well, all we're going to need to do on the u to make this work is make this a minus sign. Just noticing if you take the derivative now of this u value, you get this here. So this is nice for the du part that we've got set up perfectly, but then what do we do with this? Well, what I want to do here is let's write this piece in terms of this u. So in order to do that, let's first square this and see what happens. So squaring this out, we get x squared plus 1 over x squared. The middle terms are going to create a minus 2. And if I take this thing and square it out, we get x squared plus 1 over x squared. And now the middle terms are going to create a plus 2. Well, in order to get this expression to match this, 
all I need to do is I subtract off four, and then we got exactly what we have down at the bottom here. So setting up this piece for our substitution, what we found was x plus one over x all squared minus four equals u squared. But then let's just add four on both sides to rearrange this. And so we can say this thing right here is the same thing as u squared plus four. And so we can use that in our substitution for this piece here. So now we'll do the substitution. We've got the one half in front. When we plug in infinity here, this is gonna be infinity. This piece is going to zero here. So this is just gonna be going to infinity for the upper bound. You plug a zero in here. This part's zero, of course. This part's infinity, but now we got a minus sign in front, so this piece is going to minus infinity. Then we're gonna have e minus this thing, which is u squared plus four, and then everything else is just du. And then here we can just split this up using exponent properties. So what's gonna happen, I can break this up as e minus u squared times, distributing in the minus sign, e to the minus four. So when I rewrite it, let's take e to the minus four and bring it outside, this is just a constant. So out front, we can have one over two e to the fourth, still going minus infinity to infinity. And then what's left is just gonna be e minus u squared du. But now this right here, this is just the full Gaussian integral. This has a known value of square root of pi. Multiplying it out, putting it all together for my final solution, we have just square root of pi over two e to the fourth, and that's it. Okay, so there you have it. Really like doing the problems that are kind of set up to be almost the Gaussian integral. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.